we're going to talk all things VO. If I am like wherever I am, I'm working at a radio station, I'm working at Petco, I don't care, whatever it is you're doing, and I have this, I have this dream, like I'm going to be the voice of a cartoon character, or I want to be the voice of History Channel, or whatever it may be. It'll come from like your childhood and you used to listen to radio, or your father had this bold voice, or you like public speaking. Like you'll, you'll know if you're meant to do this sort of thing. But the thing is like, how do you find the path? How do you get started? How do you find a mentor who's not out there to take your money, but like wants to really encourage you? Let's rewind it and start from the beginning here. What, how did you, where are you from? Where's your backstory? What's your, as Gary would say, what's your uh, origin story? Origin story. Right. <laughs> yeah. Origin story is um, from a suburb of Los Angeles, Thousand mm -hmm. Oaks, California. Born and raised there. Um, so I grew up, uh, moved to Florida for a while, my infant years. And then really the VO thing started to kick in when I was in, I was about 10 years old. I would go, I would summer in Seattle, which mm -hmm. is, you know, right south of where we are right now in Vancouver. Um, and the, my cousins didn't believe in cable television. Mm -hmm. So we would go to the library and we would uh, rent, uh, check out tapes of old 50s radio shows. Okay. So I thought, I thought voiceover for the first three years was, ladies and gentlemen, okay. welcome to the Jack Benny Show. Yeah. Feeling low, feeling tense. These eight <laughs> words of common sense. Smoke a lucky and keep your level best. Like I thought it was like, this announcer sound that if you compress your voice and and I thought this was voiceover and if you want to do voiceover you need to sound like this. Mm -hmm. Then I thought that was like and I was good at doing that at creating this mimic sound. Um, then as I progressed, they're like, no, dude, you just need to be you. Yeah. And it was so hard to transition and accept the fact that my own original voice was good enough to be on television mm -hmm. because this voice is so much fuller and you know it's so much more like entertaining i thought it's but crazy how you uh, i'm sorry to interrupt but you uh, that when you change voices like that i can hear it in your chest yes because I'm, I'm i start to vibrate yeah all right so let me get let me talk about that okay. so i have a nose voice mm -hmm. no, the nose voice is up here yeah the nasal and then i and then i have the teeth voice and then I have a mid, and then I have a mid voice, and then I have a chest voice. Jeez, so crazy. all of these different pitches yeah. I use and incorporate. Mm -hmm. So when a script comes in, they're like, "We want a fifty-year-old, we want a thirty-year-old, we want a twenty-year-old." Like then I just know how, where to speak from. Mm -hmm. Am I speaking from front mouth? Am I speaking from mid mouth? Am I speaking from chest? Am I, or am I speaking from nose and going up here? Because mm -hmm. when you when they want like a younger character, all you have to do is start pitching it up, and you start speaking to the top of your mouth. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, you can. And, and if you want to go like this, you can start speaking even younger. Mm -hmm. But if you want to just drop it way down, you just put a ray down in your chest and you just let it sink in there. And then so the in the trailer work, it's gonna be more of more of down here. Mm -hmm. And when I do that, I'm not constricting them as much. So a lot of it is as if you were going to be a singer. Mm -hmm. You you learn how to compress or not compress your vocal cords. So I think it is almost like training to be any sort of uh, what do I call it? Not an opera singer because they they can. They're crazy. They're so no. good yeah. to be able to do that for like an hour. They're octaves. They're octaves are, and that's yeah, what yeah, video yeah. games is these days. Is being I able know. to like, we gotta get down. Like being able to push that hard, like on your vocal. And cords. it's hard on your vocal cords. That's right. why you can yeah. only you can only record for so many hours, like a yeah. week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Doing, being able to push because when you when you do that, you can feel like everything's getting tighter. Mm -hmm. And so when I coach with people, I say like, and, and my chest just got tight. I say. Give, give me a tight read. Just give me a tight read. We, we're by the, behind the wall. All right, we got three on the flank. We really got to get in there. And you can just hear like the tension that I just created right there, mm -hmm. as opposed to, hey, uh, this Sunday, we're going to be going to the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. And you can just hear how, how loose it is. Like the words are just kind of falling out. <laughs> like I'm not even really trying. You know? And so it's all about the intention, but use your body. You have this thing. Exactly, it. it's a tool. It's a tool. Um, when you were doing, the, you mentioned intent, but when you were doing the, the, the military stuff, 
What's going through your head? Like, are you visualizing? You have, yeah. yeah I did, I, did you catch that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Like in my mind, like right now, like I was behind a brick wall and there was dust falling over it, and, and jets were flying by, and, and grenades were coming, and mm-hmm. the guy next to me grabbed it and threw it back. Like you, you really have to, and that's just something you learn over time, or mm-hmm. you just have to be a creative person. Yeah, and like because. I always tell everyone to work backwards. Mm -hmm. Imagine the totally finished spot. Imagine playing the game Mm -hmm. and being in the game and then read your lines. Okay. Um, And this is what I just learned over time that you can never actually nail the job unless you imagine it fully produced and and everything done. Mm -hmm. Like imagine the sound effects. (laughs) The shell is flying. (laughs) Mortars go on and they're like. Because you need to be able to speak at a certain volume. Mm-hmm. You, that's going over the mortars coming in. Mm-hmm. So you need to speak at this volume because now it sounds realistic. But if, if you were to do if you were to do that, like you know, it, you wouldn't go into a session speaking that loud unless the director told you to do that. Yeah. But the point of our job is to already know what the director wants okay. and nail it in the audition. Mm-hmm. So they'll listen to the auditions. They'll listen to three hundred people and be like, all right. He knows he's speaking at a certain volume. He's in the cadence. <laughs> he's adding. <laughs> he's out of. He's adding these breaths. He like he just ran from his, battle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but that, like I said, this is an area that I don't work in now. Mm-hmm. But I study very heavily mm-hmm. because I study. I study all areas that I don't work in. Um, so you didn't know the cosmetic read. The cosmetic read is soft. It's breathy. Coming up next. Giorgio Armani, the Polo Cologne. <laughs> it's right here. It's smooth. <laughs> but but when I have a microphone right up on me, it doesn't sound so breathy and soft. It sounds like I'm present. Okay. So that's how I know how where to be on the mic. Mm-hmm. So you know you're talking pressure, pressure in the chest. How loud to speak? You're talking mic proximity. Mm-hmm. How close do I need to be? Then like you were talking with Tasia, what's your intention? Mm-hmm. And if it's going to be something like that, where the whole idea is to spray it on and seduce the other sex, mm-hmm. you need to be breathy, like you're about to make your move. You know, that sort of thing. So the, that's where the acne comes in. Off camera, we mentioned uh, like a smile has a sound, and different mm-hmm. things have sounds. Sure. Uh, so let me give you an example. Of that. Yeah. Coming up next on Fox. Coming up next on Fox. So you can just see it right in that quick example. Yeah. Because all of a sudden, and that has to do, like I said. Pressure and air. A mm. lot more air can leave my voice because I my mouth is open wider. Mm-hmm. So it's going to create this sound. And as humans, like we are so in tune to the frequency of the voice and intention mm-hmm. because we're raised with good, bad, good, bad, good, bad. Like you, I'm pleased with you. I'm not pleased with you. Um, and so that we are so ingrained that. If you step into a booth and you grab a script and you read the words, you will never get the job. Yeah. It's just not going to happen. Well, I know in acting, it's like it's all about what do you want and how are you going to get it. Yeah, the, the basic questions. Who are you talking to? Yeah, yeah. What are your intentions? And it's, I feel it's a that bit different, that, probably. that's kind of... No, no, you're totally right. Yeah. But I feel that these people that I work with have already taken those classes and they've yeah. gone through that. So I try to offer them a physicality mm-hmm. option to say, you don't always have to worry about who you're talking to or what, but I can show you with your body how, how to create that sound without having to think that you're talking to your brother or mm-hmm. whatever. Like, I'm the total opposite of Tasia. That's why when we come together, if you combine our two methods, like, you, you get the best of both you worlds. You get the best of both worlds. Because yeah. she's like, she's talking about, imagine your scenario, I'm a brother, I'm a father, like, what is your role? Mm-hmm. How would you sound with that person? And I'm Archetypes. Like, I'm like, all right, how open is your mouth? And I'm like, all right, open your mouth half an inch. You're technical. Yeah, yeah, clench yeah. your jaw this much, like a, like a singer would be. And I want you to take your both your fists and I want you to pull them into your body, mm-hmm. and now I want you to give me the read. Mm-hmm. Or I want you to totally relax, fall back, and I want you to lean on your right hand, and I want you to just give me the read. Yeah, I'm more of like that sort of thing, because there's two ways to get to that solution. Mm-hmm. And personally, I didn't find the other effective for me. Mm-hmm. Once I started teaching, my, and I just taught myself how to do this because over trial and error and not, yeah. getting, not getting the jobs. And the ones I did book were the ones that I like did something physical um, or like I was very physical or I did, I did something. Um, and I booked the, I booked the gig. Mm-hmm. 
and I encourage everyone to film yourself while you work as a VO. 100%. I know it's opposite you gotta, you, of what you think you should do. No, you got to watch yourself and, and critique yourself, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's opposite of what you think you should do, but film yourself doing VO, and that way you can look as a, as a third-person perspective and judge your own reads, and over time you will evolve, um, especially if you don't have $600, $700, $500 Mm -hmm. Every weekend, every two weekends. Yeah. Like, man, I, I was flipping hamburgers. I don't have five hundred dollars a month to I know. invest in the career. I was, I, you know, if you want to do entertainment, you wait tables and you work in restaurants, and, mm -hmm. and I had to pay rent and I had an insurance payment, and like, and not everyone has cash to learn all the time. Mm -hmm. Most pe most actors are going twice a year. Yeah, twice a year to to one of these sort of. Sessions and I can relate to that because I've been there exactly and I've probably spent ten fifteen twenty thousand dollars on these coaches mm -hmm. And so what I'm telling you is kind of a combination of all my investments. So you guys you guys owe me one But yeah, I, I re researched everybody I worked with everybody that I thought Could provide me value. So yeah, we're going back to the beginning then like how you got started So what you did is you called up everyone you thought was successful, so we can let's start from so, there. Then. Yeah, so sure. Anyone that, so I want, I have always wanted to be the voice of a network and movie trailers. Mm -hmm. That's the goal from the beginning. I don't want to be, am I gonna jinx myself, but mm -hmm. I never wanted to be a cartoon character. Yeah. Some people like I grow up and they want to be the voice of a cartoon character. Mm -hmm. I want to be the voice of a network or, or movie trailers. So I researched the people that trained those people that are now successful. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, uh, I w and I also emailed all the people that are successful. And I said, who do you recommend, since you're making X amount of dollars a year, you know, you're doing very well, you have a nice home and drive a Porsche, and, you know, as far as the materialistic side of it goes, as, you know, someone would desire, um, Who'd you train with? And they said you train with this person, this person, this person. Most of the people, if you if you reach out to someone and you said I admire your I admire your work, give me some stepping stones. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna in like thirty seconds. I worked with this person, this person, this person. Love your work. Keep going. If you're prepared, they will react and they will. Yeah. In the most in most cases, will give you. As long as you're not like, hey, uh, how do I be who you are? Like, <laughs> yeah. As long as you're like, you're showing that you are willing to put in the ten, exactly. the ten years. Mm -hmm. Because all these people did not start at the top, and they they had to, you know, just like working in restaurants and like you have to pay your dues. There's no straight to the top road. Exactly. So as long as you say, hey, I'm willing to put in my dues. Can you just give me some stepping stones? Where do I start? Mm -hmm. And what I say is I link them to a couple websites. I say go to, go to listen to television. Mm -hmm. Go to the talent agents' websites. And listen to your competition. If you're not better than them, you need to get to that point. Yeah, you have to get a certain they level. Have, why? Why? Be be realistic. Why would they hire you? Why would they hire someone who's not better than the people they already have? Obviously, you have a brand, and, and you obviously coach. Uh, can you talk about uh, the Trailer Voice Artist? Sure. Trailer Voice Artist is born out of what I think the industry should be. So, Trailer Voice Artist is a collection of talented voice actors who do not currently have management, mm -hmm. who are looking to promote their brand into the promo and trailer world. Okay, I go for people who are extremely talented, people that are veterans or beginners, who I think are extremely marketable. Mm -hmm. And I work with everyone. I bring them on. I say, hey, I, this is my invitation. I will work with you. I will cut your demos. I will work with you and help brand and market you. And I think that you have the ability to be the voice of a network or a movie trailer. Mm -hmm. And that just comes with my experience of objective listening. Mm -hmm. Like when I listen to a piece of music, like I get chills. Like I, I'm, it, I hate to get metaphysical, but it's very soulful work. Mm -hmm. Like do, does this person give me goosebumps? 
do how do I feel when I listen to this demo? Like did I just like shake in my chair? Like, was I wowed? Was yeah. I scared? Was I awed? Like and that's what the job is is to make people feel. So if I listen to some someone who's like, hey, I want to, you know, here's my demo, and I'm like, Whoo. you better believe that that get them on the phone. <laughs> yeah, you better believe that's happening to other people. Yeah, exactly. and that's happening to the audience, mm-hmm. and that's happening to the agent, and the, and the movies, uh, and the networks, the network executives, or the um, studio executives, mm-hmm. because what we're doing is we're catering our artistic talents to a marketing crowd who is going to up a chain of executives at corporations. Mm -hmm. So it's marketing and it's also art. Uh, So Trailer Voice Artist is the culmination of all of my training and experience and the ability to cast Mm -hmm. based off of emotional response. it might be kind of deep, but I hope it, <laughs> it no. answers the question. But you have connections with other agents around the, the, the United States, you, you said. Um, yes. And so you're I, basically I, a management side of things. And I am can, an unofficial. Yeah. yeah. I am not a manager. Mm-hmm. I am a dude who is a voiceover actor who happens to be good at social media, mm-hmm. at branding, at audio production. Marketing. Marketing. Yeah. And I don't consider myself a manager because I don't take money from anybody. Yeah. Everything I do is because I believe this person has talent. Mm -hmm. And if your brand and my brand are together, we provide more value. Okay. So as many people that agree with my philosophy that provide value, it's much harder to just to dismiss Mm -hmm. a collective as it is an individual. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? One hundred percent. Yeah, sure. So, so people that are, especially like the female talents that are underrepresented, that I know can crush it, mm-hmm. and then the the storytellers that are maybe with an agent that doesn't have as much political power, yeah. but have the skill. If I can just make everyone be seen and, and upfront, okay, then um, together as a whole, we will. And it's, it's a selfless it's, promotion. You're, you're doing it's kind it. of selfless, yeah. but but at the time, I like I'm super fans of these people. Yeah, like they're so good. Like mm-hmm. they're like like oh my god, like the, the like an, oh, the ultimate the ultimate whispery storyteller, mm-hmm. or or like the female that can just craft this read. Like mm-hmm. I'm just I love VO, mm-hmm. and I'm a super geek fan. And if I find somebody that contributes to this overall agenda of yes I want to make money yeah. yes I just think these people deserve to be seen and heard and yeah. be on promos and trailers because okay. they have they, they got it oh so um, what was the first role you booked first role I booked was when I was uh, there's a few because yeah. it all kind of happened at once once I got one and they kept okay. going um, I was working in Mammoth Lakes uh, I was kind of yeah, I was in Mammoth Lakes. Mm-hmm. I had no microphone. I had no home studio. I had no equipment. I just had the passion. And I booked uh, a spot for GoPro. Okay. Because a buddy of mine was dating a dude who worked for GoPro. And he knew I did VO. And he gave me the script and I crushed it at the local radio station. Mm-hmm. I had to pay him 50 bucks to go there to track it. No way. And then after that, a friend of mine saw it and his dad was working for HBO as a producer and he said hey I'm working on HBO boxing do you want to narrate some of these upcoming fights and I said if if, yeah I do you know and so I became the voice of like these international fights like it was like it was Mayweather fight it was like huge stuff that was about to happen um and so that spiraled into mm-hmm. me booking the voice of the NCAA championship season. Mm-hmm. And I did like 96 spots with them for like wrestling and basketball and football. Like mm-hmm. I just was the voice of that brand for, for that season. And then I used all of this to steamroll into talent agencies in LA. Mm-hmm. Um, and became the voice of like, I did an Auntie Anne spot, the pretzels, and then I eventually landed with an agency, uh, William Morris Endeavor, and then 
uh, gave him my, my speech, like, hey, this is what I'm about, this is what I want, I want to be the voice of major brands, I want to be the voice of major networks. And they're like, all right, well, see what you, you me listen to your demos, but it may be studio work. Mm -hmm. So I, I was like, go read. And I went and I read, like, yeah, he's real, he's got it. Yeah. And then I got a call, that was a Friday, I got a call on Monday. Um, hey, you're the new voice of Megyn Kelly on NBC that you just recorded for over the weekend. And so now I'm going from this passion thing to being the voice of a major newscaster on national television. Mm -hmm. And that began the national television uh, version of myself. Yeah. And then um, a little bit later, the NHL Network picked me because of my demo, my commercial demo. They listened to me do an Audi spot, and then uh, NHL Network picked me up to voice Alex Ovechkin's 600 goal. Oh, yeah, and yeah. people in Vancouver are probably all about more the, oh, the hockey yeah, stuff. The 30s yeah. or 30s? So I never, 30 I, for 30? Uh, something like that? Alex or? Ovechkin's 600. Yeah, yeah. 30 for 30, yeah, yeah, ESPN. Yeah, ESPN, yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. I narrated that. And then right after that, CBS was looking for a voice for a new crime drama. And everyone was reading the crime drama right here, and they were all crime drama. But I came in, I'm like, and I listened to the producer's scratch take. Okay. Because I always get a video. Mm -hmm. Not always. Most of the time, I'll get a video of the cut, the producer's scratch, and then want the VO to come lay over it. Okay. Do, do your, here's what I got. Do your thing. Yeah. And so I watched it, and being able to be so emotionally intelligent and good on good on listening to that I'm like oh they wanted to be like this okay. and so I gave him a read and uh, it was a f hey hey Brent we got a session for you it's coming up in 15 minutes we need you to patch an ICN I'm like alright all right, I'll be there hey Brent uh, so here's the script and here's you want, we're going to play it down for you <laughs> coming up next and like mm -hmm. and like in the actor's lines I hear then I have to punch my lines in right and so I did it uh, I gave him one then I gave him two takes and I'm like thanks Brent well, uh, bye and that was it. That was my audition. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the next day, they uh, I got an email contract from CBS saying, hey, we need you to fill out this contract. And I emailed major, hey, did I book the game? Like, yeah, you're the new voice of this crime drama on CBS television. And I was like, uh, oh, sweet. All right, I guess yeah. we're doing it. <laughs> yeah. But it, it just yeah. happens fast. And they're like, hey, not only that, they're going to take your, your tracked audition, and mm -hmm. we're going to print on four spots. Wow. So, uh, so next thing I know, like in a couple of weeks, that audition went to air. So a lot of time in the VO world, your audition needs to be airworthy. You need to have the audio equipment that's ready to go on air. Yeah. Because you're competing against people that do. Yeah. Whether you so, have it or not. Yeah. It's, these guys are. There's you're competing against people. That, yeah. That do. <laughs> exactly. That do. Yeah. And but I'm but my point mm -hmm. earlier was that you can you can get that set up for in 2019 for. Uh, around two thousand bucks. Two thousand dollars, okay. To, to play the start playing the game. Yeah. But not only that, like some people get lost in the gear where they're trying to get better mics. And like, no, man, it's about your performance. Yeah. Are you giving the read that is the read that is competitive on television today? Hundred uh, percent. Give us a really good soundbite. What's What's your best piece of advice you can give to somebody that's wants to do voiceover? So, so the thing about voiceover is. All you have to do is just tell people you do voiceover. Mm -hmm. That's it. And I talked to um, the most, probably the most famous Canadian voiceover. His name is Graham Judd. He's the voice of E. He does movie trailers. Mm -hmm. He does uh, networks here in Canada. And he said he said the same thing. Just that's what we all do is we just start telling people we do voiceover. Mm -hmm. And if you're good enough, your buddies will hire you. And then when your buddies hire you, their buddies hear it. Same as That's social works, media. Yeah. It's just it's just a spread of consciousness. Yeah. That hey, this this but not only that, you gotta be just be good. So it's okay to spend like I said, I spent thousands and thousands of dollars and reliable getting are, getting yeah. the coaches. So like this is marketable, this is not. This is marketable, this is not. And just start weeding out all everything that within your own voice. Like I speak totally LA. Mm -hmm. Like my voice is just L.A. You know, like this is just how I sound because I'm from there. Mm -hmm. I don't have any oohs or ahs or like I, the way I hit vowels is very L.A. But when I go into my voice, it's very sult mm -hmm. ultimately pronunciated very well because I consciously start focusing and getting in on it. 
um, there's an echo like you can just hear it. there's like a not an echo but like a, you can hear that the bass and you can hear yeah the, so, so yeah. it's all, it's it's a voice I've built over time yeah and I can't speak like that all the time or else people would think I'm weird yeah. <laughs> but but when I get behind the mic I can all of a sudden I can turn it on mm -hmm. and it's a way I project the bottom jaw a little bit forward and I do I actually I'm actually altering myself physically to create that sound mm -hmm. um, and that's just something you learn over time and that I try to take take people there mm -hmm. I said give me a read through your teeth Let's just see what it feels like to mm -hmm. do this. Or give me a read with your mouth wide open, just to see what it feels like. Yeah. So it's important to take people out of their comfort zone to, to find all these different sounds that their body can make. Mm -hmm. Because it may be that their best sound is with their mouth half open and their jaw forward okay. or something like that. Um, but yeah, just invest in your craft. Be willing to put forth the cash over time to work with people that have your best interests at heart. Mm -hmm. Website, social media, um, just put, you need to pay to play. Mm -hmm. And then one gig pay, will pay it all back. Yeah. Literally, so, just yeah, exactly. exactly. One, one national gig. campaign will pay all those six years back. It's definitely, it's an investment, right? So, yeah. And it, and it can easily pay itself back, like you said, in, in one gig. All right, Brent. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't want to keep you any. I don't, I don't want to keep you any longer. But um, we'll, let's go grab a bite to eat and uh, let's go rage, man. Yeah, <laughs> we had a long day. Exactly. It was a long day. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. All Brent's links will be in the description below. Um, if someone has a question, can they send hey, you an dude, email? I, people email me all the time. Listen to my demo. Yeah. Give me a critique. Where am I? Where do I need to go? And I yeah. say, you have this sound. You need to go to this teacher. Like I will, I will point people in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for watching and, and uh, sticking around. And like I said, all his links will be in the description below. Thank you so much to Backcountry Brewing and Color Fitness, proud sponsors of What's Your Story Vancouver, and we'll see you next time. What's your story, Vancouver? What's your story, Vancouver? What's your story, Vancouver? What's your story, Vancouver?